Our special guests today are R. Kelly's sisters for a part two, and they have a special guest. Special guest, you want to announce yourself? Hi, Dottie. Hey, Dottie, what's going on? How you doing? I'm good. How you doing? How you guys doing? How's everybody tonight? Doing well. <laughs> Hope everyone's well. Yes, what's up? Hey, uh, let's get right into it. You know what? I got to ask you guys a couple of tough questions. And one of the questions, just for the sake of what of argument, because I know where the conversation may head. And let me just give you my disclaimer on it. I personally feel that, you know, there are people who try to discredit you guys with being his sisters and this, this, that, and the other. And my answer to that is if R. Kelly has accepted you, I can give less than a shit what somebody feels or what they don't feel. Like, that is not my business. I think you're doing whatever you're doing with a good heart because you're trying to help him. I don't have time to think about the intent or the intentions of it, but you still are going to have critics. So let's just immediately get that out the way and uh, give me your opinion on that. You know, I would just say, period, you know, bottom line, we are who we are, you know, and um, we've had our share of trying to prove something to people. And, you know, right now we're here just for our brother. That's it. Not all the he says, she said stuff, but we're here to support him. That's it. Okay. That works for me. Okay, let's go. So I'm not going to get into all that. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. <laughs> let's get into what we're here for. Uh. I understand that you guys have some things that you want to talk about. That is correct. Okay. <laughs> that is correct. All right. Well, it's the calm before the storm, huh? You know what? Let's just talk about some of the Let's get into some of the things that have been going around and circulating, and, and we don't have to stay on it. But, you know, there were, there's a guy that's running around reading letters that's supposed to be from R. Kelly, and, you know, he's doing whatever he's doing with those. Are you guys familiar with those letters, or have you heard about that? I'm familiar with the letters that um, Robert wrote to Cassandra and I. Okay. Those are the only letters I'm familiar with. Okay. So you do. You guys do have letters as well. We don't have copies of them. Okay. But no. we've read a few of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, let's talk about some of the contents of those letters. Uh, who wants to start? <coughs> Excuse me, I'll start. Okay. Um, Robert was mentioning uh, about when he was at MCC, he had talked about some of the things that have happened to him there and it's really really disheartening heartening the way that he was treated and what really got me is how i don't understand why was his legal documentation taken i mean it's not a weapon it's not something that can be used as a weapon i don't understand why was his legal documentation taken from him and and uh he didn't have access to it. Uh, he complained about it. It wasn't given back until after the trial. And then he told me that uh, also his his medical records weren't given back to him till after the bail hearing. I don't understand it, the bond hearing. I don't understand any of this. So okay. everything that he did to prepare himself for the trial was mm -hmm. in that file that they held from him. And again, he went to trial, you know, um, you know, not I'm having prepared. what he needed, unprepared. And then after the trial, that's when he gets his stuff back. Wow. And so, um, you know, his it's a lot of things, a lot of his rights have been violated. We've been saying that for uh, going on three years now. You know, it's just a lot of stuff that's just unfair and, and, and his rights have been violated. Let me ask you this, though. Even if they didn't give him his paperwork, wouldn't it be uh, the lawyer's responsibility to get his paperwork? It was the lawyer's responsibility. The lawyers went to the judge. And it still wasn't, wouldn't get what it was not given back till after the verdict. Did anybody? So the lawyer worked after the verdict. That's when his legal documentation was given back. Did anybody ask why? Now that I'm not sure. Of, of it. 
I would like to say that I believe that the reason why the information was taken from him was to prevent people from coming to support him. In general, any attorney, you know, because it's a lot of people incarcerated, so somebody will know somebody who knows somebody who will help somebody. So I do believe that that was one of the reasons why the setup actually how it started, you know, and it goes all the way back to the institution, the institution. So, um, wow. What are your thoughts there? Because I guarantee you there would have been so many people supporting him and coming to his aid of defense. What's your thought on that? Let's keep listening. What are your thoughts? Anybody, but I'm just going by what he wrote to me. Well, and um uh, and that I'm not understanding. His main his main concern is if anything happens to him, God forbid, and I hope nothing does, he wants to make sure the world is not looking at him as some predator, as some scum, you know, like the media has made him out to be. He wants his he wants his story out there, you know, the way things the way it really happened right. and that's his concern and i don't blame him because a name is a lot right who was the lawyer that was assigned to get the paperwork back well this is when he was in mc uh he was at mcc when the uh, when i was talking about the medical records okay. that showed that he you know concerning his diabetes okay and who was his so, lawyer? who was his lawyer? He was he was a lawyer then. Okay, let me ask you this, man. Just be straight honest. How do you guys feel about Steve Greenberg? I don't have a comment about Steve, but I just question yeah. some of the things that, and I have a concern about some of the things that have been mentioned to me concerning um, how Robert has been was treated at MCC. And I do have a concern about that because this is coming straight from him. It's not something that's been made up, and I have a concern. If he, has, if he has a concern, I have a concern too. Right. Because I don't understand why was he in why was he in there seventy one days um, in the shoot. Right. But I don't understand that. Yeah, his body's breaking out. Body was breaking out, and you know, bumps in his head. You know. He was in the shoe 71 days, you know, um, going through all this turmoil, <clears throat> his body breaking down, and he's not understanding, okay, why is it that I'm in here with someone that hadn't been vaccinated? Mm. He's not understanding, and this is someone that that's supposed to have, you know, that some the media is trying to deem as a pedophile, trying to deem as this big time racketeer you know what I'm saying honcho head honcho person this is this is what they're trying to paint you know what I'm saying he's, he's writing letters to his sisters and he wants to get an understanding of why am I being treated like this he's not yeah, crazy right. you know why am I being treated this way what have I done who have I pissed off that I'm being treated like this and yet he still says you know I forgive them I forgive them But he wants his truth to be out. He wants to have a voice, which they have not given him for three years now. But do you think in his mental condition right now, because he wants that voice so desperately that he may make a mistake? And the reason why I have to go here is because I'm going to go to the letters that are circulating around on the Internet or being read on the Internet. Do circulating? You... There are no letters from Robert that are circulating. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. I mean, hey, listen, the, the question that I was going to ask is, do you think that a person that's in that condition mentally breaking down and they want to get their story out will just latch on to anyone who comes along that they think can help them? No, I don't. I really and honestly don't. But Robert, you would think that has, you would think that Robert has the ability to go to CBS, ABC, NBC, CNN, you know, somebody uh, that will listen to the story and allow him to get it out. Do you think that America just wants to shut him out, shut him up and throw away the key? Well, I don't know. 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 I don't
Yes, I do. Yes. You're talking about when we're in New York, we're talking to mainstream media, and they're saying they're not going to get paid unless what? Unless they print, or talk about some the negative. negative. The narrative has to be negative about Robert. This is what we're talking about. So, yes, I do believe they're trying to um, trying to make sure his voice is silenced. Yes, I do. Right. But again, I, it still takes me to this because do you think he knows that? Yes, he knows that. Yes, he knows that. He knows. And it's heartbreaking to him. And, he, you know, he says, hey, I, I gave 30 years of making good music, the gift that God himself had blessed him with to share with the world. And, um, and this is what he gets. This is it. This is what he gets. This is it. Yeah, that doesn't. As much as we would love the world to have love in their heart and all men and to abide by the golden rule and love one another and treat each other with love and kindness, it's not like that. We would love for people to be that. The world would be a better place. Right. But unfortunately, it's not. Right. It's not that way. So the you, world is now led with hatred. So do you think people Greed. have... Do you think people have figured that out from the outside and this is what's allowing people to come in and have letters read or have says or, or, or whatever? Like, because I'm just going to be honest with you, like, and you guys don't have to agree and, and, and I, I'm fine with that. But I'm, what I'm saying is what would make it kind of seem true that maybe some of these things that are being said is there's truth behind it is simply because in all honesty, Robert is a desperate man right now. He's looking at 90 years. He's behind bars. He's been in jail for three years. And it, it had to dawn on him that it, this might be where the buck stops. And because of that, people do rash things at times. And do you think that that's possible? Like, be honest. I, let's take away the love for your brother. And let's just look at it as a human being. From you looking from the outside in. Do you think that's possible? He could go through those kind of emotions? Now, what kind of, so what's the question? Explain to me what type of... Exactly, because that question was very misleading. It was very, like, multiplied in its questioning. And what is he connecting it to? What is he saying that would make R. Kelly so desperate? What is What was R. Kelly doing at this particular moment um, with the with the letters that are being submitted out who was he trying to talk to? Who was he trying to get to come in to support him at this point? Let's let's see. Hold on. Emotions are we talking about here? When I say Yeah, I would need to know the bottom line question again. Yeah. No, you know what? Can I answer that? Sure. I don't think yeah. that he's I don't think that he's necessarily just rushing and doing something because he don't see no out in it. That's from my right. understanding, from what I'm hearing from the letters. These letters could have been started when he was at MCC because mm. they're ongoing. He's adding to it. So it's not nothing that he's just doing spur of the moment. And it's just like, you know, the last the last thing he could think to come up with. I think it's something that he started when once he realized his voice wasn't being heard and things was being kept from him. Being kept from everybody, and it was only one side of the story getting out. I think that's when he started, okay, well, let me write down what I'm saying and what's going on in here. And eventually it's going to get put to, it's going to be given to someone to get put out. Right. But the someone that has been given to or the someone that stepped up to say that it was given to him, you know, I'm not going to say whether it's credible or it's non-credible. What I'm going to ask is why do you think a person of that caliber or stature would get it? And the reason why I'm saying is I'm going to knock myself because, you know, I don't think that I'm big enough to carry a story like that. And I damn sure don't think anybody else is to where it would get the kind of attention that it actually deserves. So how does information like that end up in the hands of somebody on YouTube? Oh, I get it now. So he's talking about how did someone, how did Robert write to someone on YouTube, a personality, family, friend, whatever, and they're able to get the information to us on YouTube on this platform when he could have went to the, the mass media? Well, that's a very easy question because the mass media is not trying to 
get it out. Because if you get it out, the truth is going to be thought like, hmm, that the docuseries now don't really make sense compared to what he's saying now. So they muted him for the specific reason for the docuseries to come forth, which is now not even aired any longer. But the the true corruption of what was done behind the docuseries with muting him created this. So I so get the question that he was asking. Okay. Well, I personally look at it like, well, you said earlier, all the big name stations turned their back on. Right. They was on, They only wanted to promote the negative stuff. They wanted to promote the drama. They weren't going to get paid if you said something positive about Ron. Right. So at the end of the day, he had to give it to who was ever willing to use their platform, minus everything else, just to get his story out. Right. And I don't know if that's going to be the only platform because he wants it to reach millions. Right. He just want his story to keep being told. So I just think that was the person that I don't I don't know how it happened, but I just think that was one of the people that eventually will get the letters to put out. Right. You know what? There are so many people that are involved in this case that are uh, dual personalities. And, and I, you know, like I, I talked to you earlier uh, and we were talking about something, but I, I'm not going to go there. What I'll say is like, you know, there was a private investigator involved with this that came from Nicole Becker and he was snooping around and, and trying to get information. And I didn't even trust him. Like he's gotten in contact with me several times in addition to another investigator. So someone, there has to be a leak somewhere within the camp for him to even get those letters out. How do you guys feel about the leak? Uh, because there has to be one. Like there has to be someone that's an intermediary to get this stuff back to the streets. Do you think that person is trustworthy? And do you can you figure out who it is? Now, when you say leak, what leak are you saying? Are you talking about pocket? what leak are you talking about? Pocket that's, a letter? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Exactly. There, there, are, none. there are no copies of letters. So you guys are denouncing the letters 100%. They're not denouncing the letters at all. They're just saying there's not multiple people that have access to that left to those left. Right. That's correct. Okay. So, but the person or whoever that person is that might have access, do you think that person is trustworthy? Evidently, if, if it's I a mean, person that I know, if it's the person that I know, I know that was authorized, yes, I, I believe they are trustworthy. But anybody else, no, because I wasn't told. Right. I wasn't informed about anyone else but one person. Can you talk about there aren't, Can you talk about There aren't copies. Can you talk about the authorized person? Um, I don't want to. I mean, my thing is, well, what my question is, what's the big deal about our brother getting his word out and what? Absolutely. What, Absolutely. you know, avenue and people he should use, what you know, to get the word out. What what's the big deal about it? Well, I'm, I'm not understand. I'm trying to understand. I, and, and I know I've asked that question. I've, I've, I seems like I've stuck on this several times. Here's what I'll say to that. And I'll answer it as best as I can. I think that sometimes, let me give you. A, I think that sometimes, who says what for you is a reflection of you. So. If you know, I'm gonna give you a great example. I'm just gonna go ahead and go there. I'm, I'm not going. I'm not gonna sugarcoat the shit. I listened to one of the letters. I listened to some of the comments. I read some of the comments, excuse me. One of the comments that was said was, there were going to be letters taken and they were going to be taken in Funk, Funk Master Flex to read on the air in New York. Now, let me just tell you why I think that's a whole bunch of crap. And my opinion is in law. So what I'm going to say, I'm going to produce receipts for, and you will be allowed to produce your own receipts. Type in Funk Master Flex R. Kelly on Google. Funk Master Flex R. Kelly on Google. What you will see pop up on the screen is Funk Master Flex saying every derogatory, hateful thing he could possibly say about R. Kelly. Mm. He blamed the DJs for R. Kelly being who R. Kelly is and getting as big as he was. He called him every name in the book. 
Now, with that being said, that's just a little bit of homework that anybody can do. How does it now turn around that there are letters or allegedly letters that someone is reading and the letters have been taken to Funkmaster Flex <laughs> to speak for R. Kelly? Wow. What do you mean, how is that not how if he's getting the information out? You're giving the information that this man wants to maintain his innocence from someone who has openly and publicly hated you to the point where he talked about you like a dog, not in private, but public. And you mean to tell me nobody has decided or, or nobody has had the sense to say, you know what, let me do my due diligence. What I see is a lot of people having their opinions and doing their investigations, but nobody does investigations where it counts. Mm. Because how could anyone even accept the fact that Funkmaster Flex is going to read anything from R. Kelly when he's called him a pedophile and a child molester, and you can Google the shit and look at it. Wow. And you can Google the shit and look at it. Yeah, but nobody knows that, that nobody knows that Funk, uh, this is, what is it, Funkmaster Flex. Flash. Nobody knows if he really has any letters. But it's that's just hearsay. It, but that's it, all. That's all in the category of hearsay. Wait, listen to me. Listen, hear me out. Hear where I'm going with the hearsay. Hearsay is what got R. Kelly in jail. Not proof. Mm. Hearsay. Show me some evidence. Show me some a sexual assault. Mm -hmm. Show me, even though I, I didn't see that, sure. but I heard it. So what is it? Hearsay. And guess what hearsay did got him a court case so you can't be selective as to what you want to select for evidence and non-evidence you have to address everything and it's similar to what you said in the first interview if you shut the shit down from the door won't nobody else do it no more period so, why not, so why not shut it down how do you know it's not being shut down? Mm -hmm. It could be being shut down. It is yeah. right now. We're that's what we're that's <laughs> this is part of it right now. It's a slow process, but it's still something that as 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 a journalist, I have to ask and you have to address because you still have to be fair. I, I don't think I think it would be unfair to go to R. Kelly and be pro R. Kelly and say he's an angel and not acknowledge that there was something that was wrong. And, and it's, it doesn't have to apply to a case. Cause Robert nobody, never said he was an angel. I didn't but he say damn sure hadn't done any racketeering. He never said he was an angel. I didn't say he, in, Even in his letters, he even says he's not an angel. I, but he damn sure there's certain things that he just have not done. I didn't say he did, and I, and I understand that this is sensitive for you, and that's your brother, so you're going to take it that way. I didn't say that. I was given a, I was given a, an example. I know what you, I know what you were doing. You know what I'm saying? But Robert like, is in, he, Robert is in jail. He's not, he's not desperate. Yes, he's had some, um, he, he's had some issues. Anybody being sit, sitting in jail, of course, they start thinking about a lot of things. But that doesn't make him crazy or mental. He knows exactly what he's doing. Now, as far as this funk master flex, he has nothing to do with Robert. He has nothing to do with the letters at all. Right. So I don't know where that came from. I really don't care where it came from. But I know for a fact this man doesn't, he doesn't have anything to do with Robert's story. Right. That's just all hearsay. Just like a lot of it. Like you said, just like a lot of it is hearsay. It's my job to know what's being said all the way around the block before I even get on top of it. That's just me doing my due diligence. And I appreciate your journalism. And I don't understand. I'm just, you, I'm just telling you for a fact that I know the letters are not circulating all over the web. Right. They're not. When, when I say letters circulating, when I say, Dottie, give me one second just to say to you. You know what? I'm sorry. No, Dottie, you go. I'm talking too much. Go, Dottie. What, what, I, what I wanted to say on that, and if, you know, I feel like the goal is to change the narrative. You know, we can't keep talking to people that already say free R. Kelly because they know the truth. The right. goal is to touch the people that don't necessarily believe it. You had this to say about R. Kelly. You had that to say about R. Kelly. And you based it all on what you see in the media. So the goal is to take to them as his, his side. He's never told his side of anything. So it's the goal is to reach them and to change their mind on how they look at the situation. Right. So I would think if they did take it to someone who was at one point, oh, F. R. Kelly, you know, he didn't see that, then yeah, this is his story. Read it. Now, this is what happened in his words. This is what he says happened. Maybe it'll get him a more of an open mind. Okay, now I understand. Sometimes when people speak for themselves, 
you understand it better. That's the difference between somebody taking a stand and somebody not taking a stand. When they get on that stand and tell their story, you can look at it from two different points of view. You understand? Right. Mm-hmm. You see two different sides. So, just like the media was standing outside the courthouse, yeah, they was reporting the negative stuff, but a lot of supporters jumped on there to tell what they were seeing and what was going on and to tell their truth. If they hadn't done that, then they just would have kept reporting the negative. The ones that decided, okay, we want to we want to put out what the supporters are saying. That would have been the only way they got it. Had they not said, had they had said, I'm going to go on here anyway, regardless of what they reported mm-hmm. yesterday. I'm yeah. still going to go in there and tell them that they railroading this man. They lying on this man. Right. Mm-hmm. So I feel like that's probably how they how every, how everybody should be looking at that situation, whether you for him or you not for him. If you have a if you have a platform where you put his story out, put it out, tell it over and over again as many times as you can until that until that narrative change. Yes, right. That's true. I mean, I and hopefully, like people will analyze, you know, do their own research, you know, and know the truth for themselves. And that is the key. You know, many of us on the YouTube platform, Patreon, uh, Instagram, TikTok, anyone celebrating R. Kelly, you know, anyone who has a Facebook page, a fan page, a group page, we're doing our part. We're doing our due diligence, letting people know what's going on. And as the sister just said, changing the narrative is the key that's going to bring all of this together because... Hearsay just can't create a life story lie, you know, it just can't. And I feel also that, you know, eventually all of it's going to come to fruition. And when it does, all of these platforms, all of these platforms are going to be significantly impacting the story because he has to get it out. He has to get it out, like the sister said. And and I am in total agreement. That's why the R. Kelly Appeal TV was created. That's why this podcast that we're listening to right now was created. And you'll get the information um, relative to part one very shortly. Here we go. Opinions in, in st- things of that nature. And the reason why I say that is because some of the things that are going on, I think wouldn't even have been possible if people would have just did a simple search and said, let me check out where this information is coming from. Mm-hmm. Let me do my due diligence on how this person even appeared. And then I think that it would have been an entirely different story. And the reason why I think that that's very important is because the majority of R. Kelly's case, be it how conspiracy, RICO, whatever, all of those things you guys have to understand come as a result of one thing, somebody telling. Those charges are all as a result of somebody talking. None of those charges require evidence. Mm. It starts off with somebody's mouth. This is why it's very important who says what. Because the person that says what can create more of a problem. Conspiracy today, all you need to do is have somebody say your name on the telephone three or four times. Then people listening to that phone, now you're in the middle of a conspiracy. They ain't never seen you sell no drugs. But because the drug dealer that they caught has mentioned your name, you're now involved in that conspiracy. So do you think it's not important to know who's talking about you on the phone? Who's talking about you on the internet? Who's talking about you on the radio? That's very important because that's the first defense mechanism on how to protect you from being in harm. Now, I do have to step in here and say conspiracy and the commit to exact slander it used to be slander was not really important but now through the technology devices of the internet and intrastate laws and rules all that's about to change and absolutely right that's why you got to know your inner circle you got to know who's surrounding you because the laws are technologically changing even all the way down to if you duo a uh, video, you know, what's being seen on that screen can be held and used against you. 
It's just very sad. And somebody can call you from a anonymous phone number. Well, the numbers show up, but you may not know the number. You may think it's something else and then it's something else. It's just weird. And he is so right. This podcaster is so right. And I just see that not a lot of people have done that. I think everybody is focusing on the wrong thing. Daddy, I agree with you 100% to change the narrative. So let me change my narrative. Let me ask you guys, how do we change the narrative? And give me a point that you think we should harp on to assist in changing it. Are you asking me? I'm asking everybody. Everybody can answer that. How do we change the narrative? Go ahead, Daddy. Several ways you can. Well, I, I personally, like you were saying, I went to the trial just so I could see for myself because I'm a person that's going to research. I don't need to sit and listen to somebody feed me information. I get it on my own. Mm-hmm. But when I went to that trial and I said how many different times the story changed, when I heard how, many, how, how much time the government had to spend with these certain witnesses, mm-hmm. days, weeks, months. Going over that story. The truth don't need that much coaching. Truth don't need no coaching at all. Mm -hmm. Why do, if you went through all of what you went through for five years, why do you need 30 hours of of, of, uh, going over your testimony? Makes no sense. So things like that. One minute you saying he's a good guy, you crying on his show, he's this, he's telling you good things. The next minute you said, oh no, he was this, he was that. Then you get into the courtroom under oath and you admit that you lied about certain things, that you were told to do certain things. Those are the things that I feel need, people need to um to look at because they're judging him based off of what these witnesses have said, but they're not hearing the whole truth. They hear what they telling the look, what they putting on their little YouTube channels, their Instagram, or the little, uh, I'm sorry, the little interviews they doing with the magazines and stuff. But they're not hearing all the parties that was involved, how they met this man. One thing's for sure, R. Kelly never went looking for any of these people. That's one that's thing that's for sure. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. What that, they don't understand. People that's not following it the way we're following it don't understand how many times their stories change. How many times, you know, one minute they this, one minute they that. And then again, then when evidence is being presented to them, when Kelly was actually cross-examining some of these witnesses, when they was questioned by the federal government, they even told them this didn't happen, that didn't happen. But then they come into the courtroom and say something totally different. That alone will make anybody say, hold on, something's not right. Mm-hmm. But that's not getting out. So that's wow. one of the things that I would definitely be putting out constantly to change to change that narrative. Because anybody, if it, come on now, hmm. anybody will look at that situation and be like, "Hold on, now, one minute you said this, and then if they heard everybody, every all the people that played part in this, I mean, when I was in trial, mm-hmm. it just blew my mind. I, I um I listened to the last uh, interview you guys did. And I don't care what the government did, how shady they was, all the the under-the-table stuff that they did. I sat in there for seven weeks. I still did not see enough evidence to convict this man on all the stuff that they came and convicted him with. There was not enough evidence for that stuff. It was testimony that was going to be impeached. I never heard of nobody's testimony, one of the main witnesses, where the judge is saying to the jury... If y'all want to impeach that testimony, I'll let y'all impeach that testimony. That's how bad it was. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So I would, stay, I would stay on these victims because it's just, and then you have the same story. Every single person is telling the same exact story. So you mean to tell me when not one of y'all in how many years did he change up any kind of way? Shabazz, you a man. Mm-hmm. Are you the same man with your woman now that you was when you was with your woman 10 years ago or Definitely. with a different woman 10 years ago? Definitely not. <laughs> but when you're programming someone to tell a lie, they're going to tell that same thing because they're being programmed. Mm-hmm. What what do you think the cause is? Do you think the cause of being programmed is money? Is something the government promising them? Is, it's, is it... it's money. It's greed. And now they're trying to go after his bastards. Wow. 
I mean, you got to look at it like this. If you with R. Kelly, you going to be used to a certain lifestyle. Without if you go away to jail and, and you got people all in your ear telling you, well, he might not be coming home. He might not be doing this. He might not be doing that. You ain't going to jump on the next thing and say, well, you know, if he ain't coming home, well, I got to get it some other kind of way. And I'm going to flip and I'm going to try to sell my story and I'm going to get my exposure this kind of way. It's about I'm sale. That's right. I'm going to become a victim. I mean, some of them even be trying you know, to become a victim. Yeah, yeah, he ain't coming home. He ain't coming home, so we might as well go do this. We might as well do that. Yes, exactly. Because you hear some of them that was with him on up until he was arrested. And then they all of a sudden, you're the victim. You're alleged victim. Well, you had some of them that testified they left and did it for years. Begged this man to come back. And didn't speak up or say anything until after... Certain attorneys reached out to them for a story. Wow. Or to after he was incarcerated because they don't believe he's getting out. So why not? Okay, I'm going to get my exposure this way. Wow. Wow. And, and I've read and I've, I've seen some of the texts that some of these victims, and to be honest with you, they're the stalkers, not him. They're the stalkers. He's telling them the truth, and they're the stalkers. You know, what, believe that. Let, let me ask you this, coming from a woman's perspective, because we're talking about females. Break down the mentality of a female who does stuff like that. What, what, in your opinion, do you think? How do you think they think? And we now have. Let's just keep it a general. Or if you want to, you know, go after a, an accuser, that's fine too. But I'm just well, trying to. Well, I think. wouldn't. Me myself as a woman, I don't go after men like that because I make sure that, you know, I get out and I bust my butt to get the things that I need for myself in life so that I can be, a, a you know, a positive source for my man. You know what I'm saying? Right. But bottom line, for myself, I'm able to take care of myself. I don't want a man to take care of me. Okay. So I have something going on for myself. And that all ties into a uh, mentality. That's what it ties into. I'm not going to send a man to prison for the rest of his life and destroy his 30-year career because I need a, I need a bag. I need to make sure I get a bag. I, I just can't see that. That's a mentality that is far from me. And then, I start asking, just and then I start asking, and I have to ask the question: Did anybody, anybody in that camp, any of those females have their own? Did any of them have their own? Any of them? Did any of them have their own house? Did any of them have their own vehicle? Did everything come to Robert? The only one that said that she had something before was Andrea Kelly. That's because she was getting child support like crazy. So. Uh, there was one other person who said that they were an entrepreneur. I think it was uh, Asante McGee <laughs> said that she was an entrepreneur. So, yeah, they really didn't come with much. They didn't have much of anything. Right. Okay, well, if everything came from Robert. That's a whole different saga right there. That's just like, just like, just like someone just said, was it was a Was it you, Dottie? So one of you all just said they're used to a certain lifestyle. Right. Mm -hmm. And you're used to a certain lifestyle. I mean, <laughs> that says it all right there. I'm going to do whatever I got to do to maintain this. But what about women that already have their own? Because all the all the ones that are around them, you know what I'm saying, around him that had that, you know, they had that mentality. When you have women that come in on the scene and want to help and they have their own, they got to be deemed as, oh, you just want money. Gold diggers. Gold diggers. Oh, they're not this. They're not that. Cassandra and I have our own. We have our own. So to be deemed as gold diggers, I could care less. I am so over all of that. Over the years, I'm so over all of that. Okay, so I'm going to conclude here. Um, you know, they're, they're talking the major information that I wanted to get out was the MCC conversation and um, the docuseries part. Ah, if you want to look at that, you want to Google Cassandra and Lisa Kelly's um, interview. You can do that. But um, 
So what are your points on this? I mean, as far as, you know, how the government did this situation, I mean, all the way down to not even the government, but just individual people, um, do you feel that they were being leaked? His information was being leaked out from you know, preventing him from being able, every, every single route that he took was closed down, was shut down, was denied. And it could very well be because they knew what his next move was going to be. And when the devil knows the next move, what is the devil going to do? They're going to try to rebut it. So I thank you so much for liking, commenting, subscribing to this podcast. I just wanted to bring this out um, because I didn't really know that R. Kelly had, um, I knew he had stepsisters, but I didn't know that they were Kellys. You know, I didn't know that. Um, So now we're getting closer to who the father is or was, you know, not the stepfather, but Mr. Robert uh, well, Mr. Robert Sylvester Kelly's biological father. They never really talked about that. So I guess they were saving the, um, saving something for the ending or for whatever's going to take place or so they think will take place in this situation. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I thank you so much for liking, commenting subscribing to this podcast and giving your comments and your viewpoints about how you feel relating to this information. And if you want to know more about it, like I said, Google Cassandra and Lisa Kelly's interview, and then you'll see it. Um, Wow. I thank you. And as always, keep it 100 and we'll see you Sunday, May 29th at 6 p.m. Going to be a going to have a good time. All right. Happy people. Blessings.